So the director of the new Aquaman movie addressed the fact that Amber Heard's role has been cut back in Aquaman 2, but it's definitely not what she think. He says it was a creative decision and has nothing to do with the fact that she's, you know, a monster or anything. Punk bit. So you all know about the trial, so I'm not going to talk about the trial or anything, but during the trial, Amber Heard told the courtroom that the studio, quote, didn't want to include her in the film. This was in reference to Aquaman 2 and Warner Bros, and she basically was trying to say, well, I was defamed too, see? And even though she wasn't completely cut from the film, it was definitely assumed that the studio was afraid to make a decision on the matter. So instead of releasing her from the film, they just trimmed down her role so people wouldn't have to see her evil face as often or whatever. I mean, after the trial, she was pretty strongly disliked by fans. If you can even say fans, I mean, she's been in like three movies. I don't know if she really has fans, but fans of cinema at least, or fans of DC, or fans of Aquaman, or Johnny Depp, or whatever. Fans wanted her out of the film. Probably more on principle, given the fact that Johnny Depp was released from a number of film roles since the accusations of his abuse came forward. But seeing as he was liberated and she was shown to be a blood-sucking, lying she-beast, it's only fair that she get the same treatment. Fire her ass. But instead, Warner Bros. decided to cut her role down. However, director of Aquaman 2, James Wan, was recently quoted in Empire Magazine in reference to Heard's comments on the stand, quote, it's fair that she said that because she wasn't in my head as I was working on this movie. Actors don't necessarily know what we behind the scenes are thinking about. But this was always my plan. From the start, I pitched that the first film would be a romancing the stone type thing, an action adventure romantic comedy, while the second would be an outright buddy comedy. I wanted to do Tango and Cash, end quote. So basically, Juan is saying that his decision to scale her role back had nothing to do with the fact that she is a parasitic, life-draining cockroach woman, but rather a creative decision. This could be true, but there's reason to believe it's just a narrative. First of all, she's in the trailer for like half a second, which is hilarious by the way, this is slowed down to one-tenth speed. I mean, somebody cut the trailer, and her role was scaled back, this is confirmed by the director, he just says the motives were different. On the other hand, he could be telling the truth. According to Juan, the rumors surrounding the film were all nonsense, and it was actually a pretty calm and normal set. And perhaps that's true. Perhaps everything was fine and nobody really gave much thought to Amber Heard's situation. It's still my opinion, however, that false accusations is a pretty big deal. Regardless of how you feel about leaving her in the movie or not, the fact that he decided to largely ignore the controversy is pretty messed up. It's not a nothing burger like, oh, well, those are her personal issues, I'm just gonna make a movie. Like, no, she's a monster. You need only watch a freaking highlight video from the trial to know she's a monster. If it was some guy doing the same thing she did, it would be an entirely different story here. Obviously, he would be cut from the movie, no questions asked, and likely doing time for the violence. Director James Wan trying to act like, oh, you know, that's all clickbait, we're all good here, everybody's chill. It was a creative decision. He's trying to make it sound like everybody was wrong and nobody really cares about the Amber Heard thing, but that doesn't make him look cool, it just makes him look like an unsympathetic ass wagon. She was shown in a court of law to be a liar and an abuser, and James Wan is pretty okay with just letting that slide. DC's last seven films have flopped. People remember The Flash, Blue Beetle, Black Adam, but there's also Shazam 2, Birds of Prey, Wonder Woman 1984, and The Suicide Squad. Seven flops in a row. But on the other hand, Aquaman was not only a huge hit, it was and remains the most successful DC film of all time. So, what's gonna happen with this film? Well, aside from Jason Momoa fangirls showing up, I think this one's gonna flop too. Superhero movies aren't what they used to be. They don't have the same draw they used to have, and frankly, People just don't care anymore. Please like the video or subscribe if you're feeling like a straight boss. See you in the next one.